Hi guys and welcome to this new tutorial where I will be exploring how to create these twisting blocks with a sphere rolling on top of it as an infinite loop. Uh, this video actually was something that was uh, inspired by uh, Joke, Joke, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, uh, has some really cool work, check his work out. Uh, so he's done this in Blender and I thought it would be pretty interesting to see how we can approach it and create it in 3D Max. So that's what this tutorial is all about. So let's dive right into it. I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's open up 3D Max and let's start by creating our blocks by creating a rectangle. And let's uh, make sure that it's centered on our grid by setting it to zero on the XYZ. And then let's go and edit our shape, make it adaptive, uh, 30 by 30, by 4.5 or actually maybe 4.25 yep I think that looks good and now let's go to our modifier list add a shell modifier to give it some thickness and give it an inner and outer amount of 2 and now we will go and add an edit poly and make sure you select all the edges and let's deselect the inner ed edges. We won't need those. And let's go and give it some chamfer. And we'll we'll create a chamfer that is going inward. So let's give it uh, maybe an amount of 0.45. Let's increase the segments. And let's go with a minus value for the edge depth so that it goes inwards and it gives it an interesting shape. Okay, that looks nice. And now let's go and right click on our timeline, set the start time to minus 100 and the end time to 500. And let's start to set some keyframes. Okay, let's set one at 200. And let's enable the angle snap tool with the shortcut uh, A on your keyboard. And let's rotate this 180 degrees. So if we go back to frame zero, we'll see that it automatically created it. So between frame zero and 240, now it spins 180 degrees. All right, let's go to tools, array tool, and maybe set it to 50. And let's play with the Y and give it a value of 4. And let's copy those. So it's going to copy it 50 times on the Y axis. And as you can see, the whole thing is spinning now. So the next step is how we can make them spin individually. All right, let's go to animation and go to offset controls and add offset controls. Select transform and then select everything under that. Press OK. So as you can see, it's going to work with the default values of delaying each spin so that they go one after the other. And then here we can start to control it and play around with it. So if we go to set length, uh, for example, if I turn this to 100 and I turn the per node delay to 16, you can see that the speed and the frequency starts to change. So it's really, at this point, you just have to start to play with it and see what works best for your animation and the speed that you want to create. And it's really about playing with the values and uh, testing things out. All right, so let's hide these out. And now let's go and create a sphere. We're going to create the ball that will be rolling on these. Uh, radius of 5 and make sure it's super smooth. 64 segments. And let's also make it a bit more interesting where we can split the sphere up in half so that we can see the sphere actually rolling instead of it being a single color. So it's pretty easy. Uh, first, let's set it on our uh, in the middle in the center of our grid. Uh, let's go to the modifier list, edit poly, and uh, let's select uh, the edge that is going right through the middle of the sphere. Chamfer it uh, just so that it gives us a gap. 0.05. That looks good. And now let's select 
the polygons running through the middle of the sphere. Select one edge, ring, and convert to face. Right click, convert to face, and now we can extrude it inwards. And make sure you select local so that they all push inwards. And let's give it a value of 0.1. All right. And now let's select all the edges from our chamfer. Let's loop it, chamfer those, and just soften it out a bit. Okay. All right. So now we want to give each part of the sphere a material ID. Let's give the top part, select all the polygons with the middle part. Let's give it a, a material ID of 1. And then do Control i on your keyboard to inverse the selection, and that's going to be material ID of 2. All right, so we're done with our sphere. Now let's go ahead and unhide everything. And now we're going to try and make the two things work together and sync. So that's the, that's the interesting part. All right, so let's put the sphere on top of the blocks. Just make sure that it's, uh, look at it from a side view. Uh, just make sure that it's not going through the blocks and it's well aligned. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the edge, for example. You can play with it as you like. All right, so now let's just uh, assign some default materials to our objects, just so visually things can be clearer. Uh, we can pull that up by just pressing M on our keyboard. And let's select all of the blocks and assign a default gray material and do the same with the sphere with the second material, except we're gonna go and change it to a multi-sub object. And we want to assign just two materials for it, for the top and bottom part of the sphere. And fill the second material with just another standard, standard material. Uh, you can use a physical for now. We'll change the sub at the end. And of course, this is just uh, so we can visually have a good reference to work with. All right, we're gonna close the materials now. And let's just see how this looks, okay. All right, select the sphere. And let's go and create a dummy around the sphere. And let's also make sure that we align it exactly to the sphere. You can use the Align tool or Alt-A, select the sphere, and make sure you align it to the center. And now you, let's use the Link tool and link the sphere to the dummy. Now they're going to move together. So now we will be working with the dummy rather than working with the sphere, just to make things easier. Let's go to frame 100 where the second block is just starting to move. And let's set a keyframe there. And let's make sure auto key is on and let's move this to, let's move this eight frames. And we can see that it's moving nicely, just as a test. All right. Now let's open the curve editor and we want to select all the points and set the tangents to linear and then go up to edit controller out of range types and we're going to select the relative repeat. All right. Now this helps us in creating a seamless infinite loop. All right. We're going to close the graph uh, editor. And let's just play it quickly. And uh, we can see it nicely moving at the same constant speed. Now, one thing you realize that the sphere isn't rotating, it's just moving. So we're just gonna fix that real quick. Let's select the sphere and go to frame 100, auto key and set the key. And let's move 10 frames forward or eight frames forward and set the auto key and let's rotate this to 45 degrees.
yep that looks right again let's go to the curve editor for the sphere let's select the points and let's and let's turn it to a linear curve and we're going to repeat the exact same steps go to edit controller out of range types and select relative repeat and now let's test it out we'll see that it's going to keep going on on an infinite loop which is super cool now as you can see it's moving forward and also it's rotating which is exactly what we want so now let's go ahead and create a camera I'll use a physical camera and let's just uh, place it from a top view we're going to select the target and align it to the dummy okay and now let's go and view that camera or you can press C on your keyboard and select that camera and now it's much easier to edit and move around we can see exactly what's happening and let's select a frame that looks good depending on the resolution that you're going to go with I think something like that looks nice. I usually like to make another dummy which would just control the camera. So let's make a dummy that's a bit bigger than our original and align it to the first dummy. And we can even link them together so that they move together. Now I'm going to link both my camera and my target to the new dummy. So now what happens is as the, the ball is moving, the camera is moving with it. So it's a constant movement and everything is moving very nicely together. Of course, we can adjust the camera as we like. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, make sure we have the right angle, the nice angle. And if I go into my animation settings, let's just adjust it so it starts from 160 and set that from the very beginning. And there we go. That's our constant loop. I'd even remove the ending to be 224. All right, so there we go. We have the infinite loop all set up. And now let's just... Uh, really quick jump into creating the materials and do a quick light setup and end up with something that looks super nice all right so what i want to do now is just quickly show you uh, my end results how i worked with the light setup and the materials in my scene so just a few quick pointers and a walkthrough uh, in the file that i have so first things first i wanted to create uh, I wanted the output of this animation to be something that I can use as an Instagram reel. So I went to my render setup and I set it to 1080 by 1920. And if I just press Shift F, I can see exactly how it's going to be rendered out as. And let's pull up the actual end result so we can look at the light setup that I have. All right, if you look at the lights, I only have three lights. And I'm going to turn them all off. Let's start with the first one, which is my HDRI light. So this is a basic HDRI light. Uh, you can choose the map of your choice that can go with it. It's just set to a value of one. And this is basically the, uh, the main light setup that will light the whole scene up. The second light that I have is this huge disk light that will give me some extra highlights and shadows, especially on the sphere since it's reflective. And it's very, very minimal and subtle. It's just at 0.7. So it's just pointing towards, it's going from this side. It's pointing towards the sphere. And then my third light has to do with my backdrop. I created a huge grid, a huge plane in the back with a very light color, a very subtle color. And just so that it doesn't end up being uh, just a plain color, uh, I wanted some brightness coming out in the middle of that. So 
I just have a light pointing towards it and it just becomes a bit more interesting. So you can see the difference. All right, so this is the light setup. When it comes to my materials, uh, since I'm using uh, something that is refractive on the boxes, the first thing that I did was I added another shell modifier to the boxes and just gave it an inner amount, something like 0.5. You can see what happens if I remove it. If I remove it, it doesn't look as good. So this is a good trick to use on, ref on refractive materials. And for the materials, I went with some pre-existing materials that come with V-Ray. So for this, I used uh, the orange juice material, and I uh, changed the refractive uh, amount on it. So I made it a bit more blurry and changed the color of it. And then for my sphere, I used a combination of this material the waves along with this material and aluminum blurred aluminum material so so that's pretty much it there's three materials there's three lights one camera oh and of course if you go to the camera this always adds uh, more render time but also adds more beauty to it you can always play with the aperture level and that will give you your depth of field make sure you enable it so if you even if you turn it off, it's pretty nice. It's gonna render much faster. But I usually like to add some render, uh, some depth of field, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoy the tutorial, and I'll see you next time.